Growing Deer TV is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Also by Reconics, Trophy Rock, Gallagher, Muddy Outdoors, Eagle Seed, Nikon, Winchester Ammunition, Redneck Hunting Blinds, Derby City Turkey Calls, Ansman, and Antler Dirt. Don't really need a thermometer on a truck to tell you it's hot because the soybean leaves are flopped over trying to conserve moisture and get out of heat. Corn's all shriveled up and the clover is just flat and brown. The only green thing in a clover field right now is some type of really tough weed. That's all the thermometer I need to know it's really stressful on the deer herd and Nathan and I. But the cup is always half full in my world and this could leave for some outstanding hunting opportunities independent of antler size. That's what we want to talk about today capitalizing on the situation and what we're doing right now to prepare for hunting season. Although the growing conditions are really rough in a lot of the lower 48, there's a few pockets where they're really good and one happens to be in a portion of West Central Illinois. Now Nathan and I got to go up there to Fulton County, Illinois this past weekend and be part of a field event hosted by the West Central Illinois branch of the Quality Deer Management Association. They're going to get up and have a snack before they go out to the big corn and bean field. That's typical deer behavior. I love these opportunities to talk about food plots and hidey hoes and switchgrass and cover and elevated blinds, all the stuff, and also learn from the attendees. There were about 100 people there. Great time, and I got to tell you, after everyone left one day, I slid out to the pond with Mike O'Reilly, one of the owners, and checked out his pond management. Check out that big old lunker there. Man, it's always great to share with fellow hunters and especially see something green compared to what we have here at the Proving Grounds. But back at the Proving Grounds, we've got to be realist and face these really tough conditions. And if it doesn't rain, and I'm sure it will, but if it doesn't rain, food plots just can't grow with no moisture. And that leads us to native vegetation and primarily acorn. Acorns are either a blessing or a curse. They're a blessing if you live like in northern Missouri or places that are heavy in ag or other land use practices. There's just a few acorn trees because when acorns fall, they're like fudge and deer just can't pass up some when they walk by. So if you know where there's a big white oak or red oak and it's dropping acorns and it's the only one in that section of land, you've got a hot spot. But if you've got acorns everywhere, like here at the Proving Grounds, it means deer can just bed and move, bed and move 10 feet a day when the acorns are really dropping and it makes deer really difficult to pattern and very difficult to hunt because you can't get between the bedding area and the feeding area. A lot of people get real excited about acorns. I usually don't want acorns. I don't like my deer eating acorns because it's really a low quality food source. No matter where you're hunting, there's a couple things about oaks that are really simple to understand that may make you a better hunter. First, there's two families of oaks basically throughout North America. There's white oaks and red oaks. Now there's a traditional white oak tree. It's a species, Quercus alba, the white oak. And then there's red oak, the northern red oak and the southern red oak. But even live oaks and chinkapin oaks and blackjack oaks and all the oaks and common names that are in your area fall into either being white oaks or red oaks. So there's a couple factors about white oaks that hunters really need to understand. They typically don't have as much tannic acid, which makes them taste bitter, as the red oak family. So deer prefer white oaks usually over red oaks. And there's always local variations, but that's generally true throughout the whitetails range. But that lack of acid, which serves as a preservative, means that white oak acorns don't last as long on the ground as red oaks. So if you're in an area that has both white oaks and red oaks, like here at the Proving Grounds, I want my early season stands around white oak trees and my late winter stands, if I've got a heavy acorn crop and I think there's enough to last into the late winter, around red oak trees because the white oaks, after a bunch of rain or warm temperatures, will actually sprout and try to grow. And once they sprout, deer typically don't go to them. Remember, acorns are just seeds. Now here's a little tip I don't think a lot of hunters think about. 
open grown oak trees like on a college campus or on the edge of a food plot or the edge of a pasture where they get to have a full canopy or at least three quarters canopy usually have limbs coming all the way to the ground they're catching more sunlight more moisture that roots can spread out without competition from other trees tend to produce more acorns and maybe even more frequently but the negative there is unless you're hunting the first week of season if there's much hunting pressure in your area deer will especially mature deer will avoid those areas during daylight hours. You'll find all kinds of scrapes and maybe scat or droppings in those trees, but a lot of nocturnal activity. If you want to find where mature bucks are consuming acorns in daylight hours, it usually means taking a walk in the deeper woods, especially after the first week of season. I've got a couple buddies that really scout by walking around and looking at holes from last year. Oh man, there's a bunch of acorns under this tree last year. I bet it's gonna have good acorns this year. They forget their binoculars and they're not looking up in July and August to see what's coming on this year. That doesn't work. So in an ideal world, I'd like about 60% white oak and 40% red oak if I'm managing my forest for wildlife, for acorn production. And that's a good example. They never get perfect, but if I'm thinning trees or doing TSI, timber stand improvement, I may thin the red oaks a little harder if my white oaks are thin or if my white oaks are really populated and I'm trying to favor red oaks. I'm gonna do a forestry practice that will hopefully, for the next generation, will give me that 60-40, somewhere in there split between white oaks and red oaks. So remember, you find a bunch of caps on the ground under a tree, doesn't mean there be acorns there this year. It's the weather conditions that determine whether there be acorns this year. All these tell you is that tree is capable of producing acorns. All right, let's grab our binoculars and go scout some more. Because remember, in a closed canopy forest, your scouting tool for acorns this time of year, July, August, is either a big ladder or a good pair of binoculars. Split tree right up here, about 40 things loaded on top. My gosh doing your scouting right now with a pair of binoculars and go ahead and hang your stands. Think about how the deer are approaching and we're always thinking about that wind direction. Just like a food plot, I would like to be off 50, 100 yards or more from that acorn tree instead of right on the little patch I find. That way I can catch deer in transition, maybe let some does and fawns go by first, get that big mature buck coming into the feeding area before it gets dark. But no matter what they are, we know come hunting season, deer are going to food, they gotta have water, they need cover. There's a lot of scouting that can happen right now and that's a great family activity that we can do and not worry as much about disturbance, but we really wanna limit that disturbance come closer to deer season. Hey, thank you so much for watching GrowingDeer.tv and I hope you consider sharing it with a friend.